Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's time to take global stories that made it to the front page of the papers this morning. And joining us to review the papers is Stephen Agodie. He's a solicitor. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. My pleasure. All right. Good morning. Um, we'll be starting with the punch this morning, and the punch leads with hunger protests that loses steam as DSS grills seven foreigners. The writers here says police crackdown halts protests, U.S.-U.K. demand dialogue, northern governors relax curfew. Another says Sanusi blames Kanu looting on intelligence failure, tension rises as soldiers shoots boy in Kaduna. So we've seen um, the nationwide protests go for about three days, and um, there were so many things that happened. There was looting, there was killing, um, which is quite unfortunate. But now, this protest was supposed to be for about 10 days, which is um, from uh, August 1st to, uh, I think, Saturday, the 10th of August. But we've seen that the protest has been halted, and as of today's papers, he says, loses steam. But I want to get your take on all of this, the fact that the protest is not as much, well, it doesn't have as much momentum as we expected. Um, and with the things that have happened here in Kaduna, Kanu, where we've seen it get violent. Well, I take a different opinion for, from that. I actually think that uh, the protest has had momentum. Maybe not in the south, but apparently in the north, mm. um, which is the reason why it appears that government is now alluding to the fact that uh, maybe there's some foreign influence. In so far as I see, that allusion is based on the fact that generally we in Nigeria, I don't think we are conscious of our geopolitical location and we don't look at um, the authorities simply don't look at what is going on around them we hardly know what is going on in the republic talk of or to, what is going on in cameroon these are our neighbors we don't know what is going on in jay we had our press had the reports and all that essentially what i see is uh, in the north is that they are taking the color of what they see just above them in Niger Republic and uh, what has been happening in what they often call the Maghreb region. You see, because you uh, otherwise, how do you explain? How do you explain people carrying the Russian flag? I mean, no Nigerian politician wants Russian influence here. But if you look at what has been happening up there with the uh, uh, with the insurgence of uh, military rule and uh, the Russian influence, you will begin to see that this is what is really at play here. The common people here and the common people there are alike in terms of uh, tribe. And uh, if you go deep into the north, you find that there's no real border between and all that. So I think the protest took on a life of its own, a dangerous one, really because of what has been going on around us geopolitically and unfortunately we don't study, we don't we don't we don't study our geopolitical uh, environment and all that which is why you see that in the uh, look at the gulf of guinea we don't know what is going on there we don't know what is going on left right up and all that so it's our own problem that we don't know you know yeah, it's, but it's unfortunate that um, uh, the people who should be listening to uh, the masses are only blaming themselves. It's a political thing. It, it seems as if hunger is a political thing right now. Because people who went on the street, even though uh, the protest may have been hijacked or may, people may have taken advantage of the protest uh, to do one or two things, the bottom line is that people are suffering. And they keep saying that it is opposition. In, in a state that is run by APC, they will say it's PDP. A state that is run by PDP, it is APC. And they're just trading blames and all that. They don't seem to have learned any lesson from this. Uh, you see, as I was saying somewhere this morning, this is the movement we have with APC. Um, seems to be one of the most self conceited ones because what I see is the, the problem stares us in the face. There's hunger. 
we know where it started from from the preemptory removal of subsidy that it was too early government came in did not study the situation they were it was the same apc government but they were not the same administration they didn't take time to study the situation was there sub, was there fraud in subsidy why are the refineries not working all those studies were not done um um, subsidy was too preemptively moved without putting in place anything and all that. They, of course, you had the electricity tariffs which went off the roof and all that and all that. You know, and you know, you are operating on the kind of uh, ideology that uh, that subsidies are a bad thing. Uh, I mean, that, that's neoliberal nonsense because everyone has subsidies of some sort in their country. It's where you apply it. You must ensure that it's not uh, uh, used for fraud and all that. And who uses it for fraud is the elite, really, and all that. So, but, but um, how do I we explain the fact that uh, even when they say subsidy is removed, like on the Guardian newspaper, uh, they say, despite subsidy removal, Nigeria spends $600 million monthly on fuel import and all that. So we're spending so much money, our refineries are not working, and everything that we are, we're crying about is happening right under our nose. But we're concerned also uh, that um, uh, they, the presidency has said that um, they, they have rejected foreign interference, launches probe into violence, says Tinubu didn't take office to make life difficult for citizens and all that. So they are saying that on the daily independence um, this morning. Uh, obviously, some countries are complaining about how they saw, uh, what they saw when the protest was going on, the response of the government and all that, and they are voicing their views. And the federal government has come out to say that they will not tolerate any foreign interference and they are launching a probe into violence. I don't know where they see foreign interference, really. I mean, it's... Uh... It's a mystery to me. It, the only foreign interference I can see is that the masses in the north are taking color from what is going on around them and carrying the Russian flag and all that. As for um, opposition parties, what do opposition parties really exist for? The opposition parties exist to oppose you. So if uh, in the general public has an issue about how you are governing, who should champion it? Who? It's the opposition party. That's the it's basic government. That's what opposition parties should do. They should um, uh, side with uh, the people in order to. Of course, the opposition party's object is to destabilize, to not to destabilize, but to to how do you put it now? Uh, to uh, aggregate alternative views. Uh, about government policy, that's the object of it. So it sounds a bit um, authoritarian for you to say that uh, they shouldn't be doing that and to be saying that they are enemies. This is the purpose of uh, opposition in a democracy to aggregate alternative views. You know, so I don't, I don't really see uh, why government is going the way they are going. Right. They should look for solutions. The, the problems are clear. All guys are people. There's that hyperinflation. Prices go up every day in every sphere. I mean, this is clear. I mean, you don't. You're, it's not what your enemies are doing that is causing that. It's your policies, the kind of policies you put in place. So look at it. Electricity tariffs, uh, fuel subsidy, uh, the way you are man managing your foreign exchange is having a real impact. So what do you do about that? Look for those solutions. It's not your enemies that are causing anything. That's my view anyway. All right. So, well, still speaking on the protests, in another address, this is on The Guardian, in another address, Tinubu asked Nigerians to look beyond temporary pain. So the president addressed the nation yesterday saying we should look beyond the temporary pain, saying they have so many plans in store, things that are going to help the country. And let's not just um, be fixated on this, that there's going to be a glorious new dawn in his words. First, I want to ask, do you think this should have been the president's speech on Sunday instead of the one that was being given? 
And also, is this something that we can start to trust the government, understanding that, yes, maybe there might just be some plans in, pay, in place, and this is just temporary pains that at, at the end of the day, we would all smile, there will be a light at the end of the tunnel. Look, um, we have been at uh, this democratic experiment since 1999. And... From the beginning, we have been talking of dividends of democracy. What really has been happening? Well, in Abbas on just time, 99, there was a little stabilization with all our grants. There was some kind of stabilization. But since then, we have been moving steadily downwards. To the chorus of empty uh, appeals to hope, they are, we have been appealed to, to hope in, uh, in, in empty words, really. What, what, what real progress has gone on in, in, in terms of the lives of, uh, the lived life of people? It's, it's too small. The, the progress is too small. So, uh, you know, resorting to platitudes, Oh, we are doing so much. You will soon see the result. How, how, how many years are we going to wait to begin to see the results? The only results we see is that uh, 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 you look through the papers, all you see stories of massive looting, corruption, corruption, corruption. EFCC was set up to address it. EFCC is not achieving that much of an impact. You see uh, uh, senators buy, buying, uh, 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 refusing to buy locally made innocent. They say they must buy the latest jeeps from abroad and all that. Some of them even come to the TV to Arugan, they say, you want us to buy innocent? I mean, there was a senator who you want us to buy innocent. Don't you know we travel, we travel uh, uh, very far and the roads are bad? As if you are not elected to repair those bad roads that you are talking about. So, at this stage, uh, 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 appealing to, uh, oh, these are temporary pains. This, this is what you have been hearing since 1999. These are temporary pains, temporary pains. How, 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 how long will it get before temporary becomes uh, permanent? You know, you don't just uh, start appealing, appealing to empty world. Let's see some concrete action for a change. Deal with uh, 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 ballooning uh, electricity tariffs. Deal with subsidies. Look, look how, I mean, how many companies have left Nigeria uh, since subsidies were removed. We are not attending to that. In this ideas, you are talking of a uh, presidential jet is not uh, functioning. When we know uh, leaders from uh, progressive countries use a uh, 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 Private, uh, public airlines to travel. What is, what is there in using uh, because because we, we are a considered uh, people? What is there using a, 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 a normal airline for a head of state to use normal uh, or for government officials to use normal? What is, what is there? We will keep uh, 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 over inflated. We have an over, over inflated sense of ourselves. I mean, there's nothing to all those things. They, in the midst of uh, what is a, a, a national crisis, you are, you are talking of a, 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 a presidential. These are some of the things that annoy people. These are some of the uh, causes of people's annoyance. The, the, the total lack of uh, empathy, the total lack of empathy that we see in some of our uh, the, the legislators and leaders and all that. They, 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 and it is better the sooner they, they get their acts together and show, start showing some empathy and consideration for the people today, it's better for all. Okay, um, away from the protests, uh, there's drama in the oil sector right now. Uh, on all the uh, papers that we're reviewing today, we have uh, these uh, headlines uh, Crude Crisis, National Assembly to Probe NNPC Dangote Refinery. That's what the punch carries. On The Guardian, economic sabotage, Senate queries $1.5 billion spent on Port Harcourt refinery, which eventually is not working. And on Daily Trust, it is oil sector. I'll reveal the truth when time comes. That is according to Kiari. The riders are Senate probes $1.5 billion spent on Port Harcourt refinery. Federal government spends $600 million 
on monthly fuel importation and all that. The stakeholders were invited to the National Assembly uh, to face the Senate committee that is probing this uh, sabotage and all of them were just defending themselves and counter uh, accusing one another and all that. And instead of coming out to give us the information, everybody was now saying that when the time is right, I'm going to, uh, to say what I'm supposed to say. I wonder when the time will be right. Mm -hmm. Okay, as, a, as an alibi for our oil sector, let me just say that um, you see, the oil sector worldwide is, um, is, is, is dirty. You, you have to give it, you have to say the truth. Um, I remember one of, one, of the, one of those who started the OPEC made the, made the quite graphic statement one time that uh, oil is the excrement of the devil. Mm -hmm. Our sector is bedeviled by many things. One of the things that is bedeviling our sector is, first of all, should, in my mind, should NNPC actually exist? What do we, what does NNPC really do for us? Mm -hmm. What was it set up for? I would imagine that NNPC was set up for us to use it as a, a vehicle for oil exploration. That that purpose has failed totally. So why why do we really have an NBC? There are other government departments and bodies that can do the work of an NPC. Now that body is made in so much mystery and confusion. You see they what is this they said they say they privatize this. How is this privatized? How it relates to public? You don't really get it. You know? They can't repart they can't they are the root. They seem to be at the root of why refineries will never work. Now they are having a problem with Dan Gute, who himself, well, it's a problem to himself. But they are made in all kinds of problems. Right? All that said sitting was befuddling. What was happening there for Christ's sake? The allegations thrown away. We know something we won't tell you. Why are you before Senate Committee if that is all you want to do? No. Now, NNPC is one place we must get a grip on. What do we want it for? What's the purpose? We have to dis rediscover the purpose of NNPC. That's what we should do. Not all these uh, 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 the blame trading and all that, throwing back. So that that is not going anywhere. Let's rediscover. Why did we? Why would it we in the first place set up the NPC? Yeah, uh, Petrobras is functioning. Start oil has been functioning very well. It's not about, I mean, I know uh, neoliberal uh, dogmatists will tell you that uh, government, uh, government does not do, uh, do well in business. But Start oil is government. Petrobras is government. Petrobras may be a little lucky, but they get things done. They explore oil and all that. We should take a, a look at the oil sector. In spite of the fact that I have said oil sector is, is a natural business, even in the US and other, but we should take a grip of the oil sector. Above that, we should also move. I mean, we've been saying it all these years. The revenue for oil should be photo diversified. It's simple. We've been saying it all these years. We don't do it. We simply take the thing and consume it. And more so in this time. That's what we are doing. We are just consuming. No, 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 no movement towards taking the oil and diverting it. Look at what no we did. They simply said we won't eat money from this oil. We put it in a sovereign uh, 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 account. And they put it there. And uh, the, few, the few, future generation can benefit from it. Here, we just take it and eat it. Passing it to non functional states and local governments, 774 local governments. I mean, God will help us. All. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the electricity sector. So on the punch, it says power generation hits three-year high of 5,105 megawatts. Now, we know that Nigeria is a population of over 200 million people. And then we're generating about 5,105 megawatts. They're calling it a three-year high. But if you look at other countries, for instance, if we look at South Africa, South Africa generates about 70,000 megawatts for a country of 60 million people. 
if you do the math, it's not even mathing because how can we have a country of over 200 million people and we're celebrating 5,000 megawatts? Is that something that should be celebrated saying, oh, we have a three-year high? We're calling it a three-year high of 5,000 megawatts. I want to get your comment on this, please. The power generation is at this moment, but beyond that, um, well, you see, let's go back to where we came from. Um, government was running um, electricity, and um, they didn't quite run it very well. Mm. Now, we have a privatization program that, to me, is also not going anywhere. Well, the main thing with this privatization program is increase of tariffs, increase of tariffs. Obviously, the uh, process of privatizing um, the sectors in the um, power system was flawed. Apparently, the wrong people got to buy it. It's one area we need to look at again and all that. We need to look at that power sector again because, you see, everybody that has been involved in the ministers, in fact, one of the ministers, First ministers wrote a book recently, and if you read that book, you will see that what I've just said about the power sector uh, having been parceled out to people who are not ready to do the job, he alludes to it is in, in his own latest book. So it begs the question: if at, the, at that level that is known, so why are we still with this power reform? program. As a developing nation, really, there is no way you can ex uh, um, escape from the fact that the state has to do something to bring down electricity tariffs for production. If you are going to produce competitively, you need your power sector to produce affordable electricity. You see, you can't just go down the route of this new and uh, say it's let like the market keep the, the deciding. If the market keeps deciding, you will not get affordable electricity. That's what is playing out. If you don't get affordable electricity, I mean, how you won't get uh, uh, investment into it too, because it, I mean, the, the, thing, the whole thing becomes chaotic, chaotic really. So we need to look at these things holistically. Government cannot remove its hands totally from electricity and say it's market-based. No, it won't work. We need to find, government needs to find a way it will, that it would intervene in the se sector, whether it's infrastructurally in generation or whatever. But to say government won't, won't put its penny there, it's now in the private sector, like like one minister said in his recent book. That's a mistake. Okay, uh, so um, maybe we just uh, move to a final thing that will uh, help us just wrap up this show today. Um, uh, I'm trying to select which one will will will, will help us. Uh, yes, to wrap up. Okay, um, now. CBN auctions $876 million at uh, 1,495 Naira to the dollar to clear the retail FX request backlog. Uh, we were told that uh, our own bonds had performed woefully in the, in the recent past, and uh, the CBN is trying to rejig the economy, sort of, by floating these bonds and all that. What, what do you think about this policy? The other, uh, another headline says that um, a 12 month uh, policy, forex policy, has been jettisoned just because uh, the CBN wants more life into the economy. But what do you think about the policies of the CBN uh, as it relates to? the economy, whether it is dwindling or going high, we don't know, but how do you think, what do you think about the policies of the CBN so far? I think the function of the, CB, of, of the CBN in the financial sector should actually be the first of all, maintaining some form of stability. And that has been grossly missing this CBN. There's been a lot of policy fluctuation and changes 
chopping and changing and everywhere, with them not really going anywhere. We there was not seeing the impact at all of uh, of uh, the experience and all that. And then you wonder whether they are really up to the job right now. Um, the main focus right now should be looking at some of their policies and making them a bit more consistent. Making it more, no matter how bad your policy is, but if you keep being consistent, maybe someday you can get somewhere. Maybe it's a bad place or a good place, but you will get somewhere. But if you keep changing, chopping and changing and chopping and changing and all that, you are likely not to get anywhere. The, the current um, team of this administration needs to consult really with those that were there in the past, those that have succeeded. When I mean that, I mean the Obasanjo team was much of a success. So there's no shame in going back to those who are active players at that time and seeking some advice on what to do. Since um, apparently some of these people that are now there in the don't seem to be able to grapple with what is on the ground. That, this is what we saw in the Buhari administration too. Um, the outstanding performance of the um, um, players during Obasanjo's reign, he was not followed up after. Um, you, up till Jonathan, you still have had the Mrs. Okonjo, whether the who, whatever you think of her, knew her onions in the neoliberal fashion and uh, could keep you stable and all that. Well, since then, we just have managers of the economy who don't seem to know what they are doing. I mean, how did we get to the stage where uh, from almost zero debt to the kind of debt we have today? It's a scandal, really, that we, we, we did that. It's, it shows that uh, our con uh, economic management has not been continuous. Because I thought when I celebrated when uh, Obasanjo's team took out, out of debt peonage, and I thought that the idea was to keep us permanently out of it. But we began to hear strange things like, oh, debt is not a bad thing. Debt is, you can use debt to grow and all that. We all know how to obligate our, our economic managers, our politicians usually are. So I, I had thought that uh, after we got out of that uh, debt problem under our person, that the idea would be, do what you can to keep us from going there and all that, to be consistent and all that and all that. All said, that was the, that was the greatest um, period of economic management. Albeit, we managed well, but we didn't move to the next stage of development. But here now, we are all off the rail. No one knows what the aim, what's the target, what's the objective, and all that. We're just playing financial games and all that, and all that. And uh, what, what, what you call so call Kalu Kalu, you know? It's, a, it's, it's like a casino. So we need to get, get a grip of economic policy. The current managers need to reach out to the, to, to the players in our most successful time. I ask for advice. Fortunately, one of them is a governor of the state, uh, of one of our states now. They, they could reach out to him for advice and help to be more consistent in that new, new liberal tradition that they are on and all that. That's what I think. That's right. what I think. Okay. This is where we have to wrap it up on this segment right now. Thank you so much, Stephen, for coming and sharing your valuable contributions with us. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day, sir. Okay, we've been speaking with Stephen Abgiode. He's a solicitor and we've just been reviewing the papers this morning. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic that talks about the federal government spends $600 million monthly on fuel importation, according to the finance minister, Wale Adjun. Please stay with us. <laughs>